edge of the Florida Everglades and only 10 miles from the beach, a piece of land sits within a picturesque setting as if it were itself within a movie. Palm trees and green grass present a perfect backdrop for the pink flamingos that adorn this oasis of a time gone by. In its heyday, it was described as breathtaking, remarkable, extraordinary, and one of the most beautiful racetracks in the world. It would not only become a place for the wealthiest people in the world to spend their winter months, it would also become a stop for some of the best racehorses the world would ever see. Florida's first thoroughbred horse racing track, Hialeah Park, quickly became a premier destination for horse racing enthusiasts around the world. Park's history dates back to the early 20th century and played a significant role in the development of horse racing in Florida. Hialeah Park was opened on January 25, 1925 by aviation pioneer Glenn Curtis and his partner, Missouri cattleman James H. Bright. The track was designed by architect Lester W. Geisler and its construction cost around $1.5 million. The track's design and features were unlike any other at the time. It featured beautiful landscaping, an ornate clubhouse, and a stunning flamingo-shaped fountain in the infield. Hialeah Park's Spanish-style architecture and lush gardens added to its charm, making it a popular social destination as well. During the 1920s and 1930s, Hialeah Park gained a reputation for hosting prestigious horse races and attracting some of the most prominent figures in American society. Wealthy socialites, politicians, and celebrities were often seen at the track, and it became a symbol of elegance and sophistication. Notable horses such as Seed Biscuit and Citation raced at Hialeah Park, adding to its prestige. In 1929, Hialeah Park introduced the Florida Derby, a race for three-year-old thoroughbreds. The name of the race would later change to the Flamingo Stakes in 1937. The Flamingo quickly became one of the most important races for Kentucky Derby contenders, and its winners often went to achieve success in the Triple Crown races. Nine of the Flamingo winners went on to win the Kentucky Derby, and two of them Citation and Seattle Slough would go on to win the Triple Crown itself. Hialeah Park continued to flourish throughout the 1940s and 1950s, hosting renowned races and attracting large crowds. One of the least heralded but historically important runners at Hialeah was a three-year-old named Bridledon Bit. Running in a simple claiming race, thousands of eyes would watch him as he made his way onto the track on February 7, 1969, with 20-year-old Diane Crump aboard. It was the first time a licensed female jockey would ride in a paramutual race in the U.S., and onlookers knew it was a revolutionary moment. It was clear that most were not happy with the idea that a woman was going to be allowed to race. A security detail was deemed necessary to accompany her, through the crowds from the little room she was given to change in, all the way to the saddling paddock. Ownership would change hands a few times until 1977, when it was acquired by a breeder and developer, John Brunetti. Brunetti was committed to develop and restore the legendary racetrack, which on March 2, 1979, was listed in the National Register of Historical Places. In 1974, Academy Award-winning film The Godfather Part II was filmed at the historic track and would signal the way for others to use the venue, 
1978, Oscar-nominated and Golden Globe Award-winning film The Champ was filmed at Hialeah. In 1988, the movie Let It Ride was also filmed at the track. The horse is probably going to swallow its tongue or something. It is coming through! You're the greatest I've ever seen. I'll tell my grandchildren about you. In 2001, Hialeah Park stopped hosting thoroughbred racing after a change in Florida state law kept it from having exclusive dates in its competition with close by Gulfstream and Calder Racecourse. Consequently, owner John Brunetti said that with the track already struggling financially, it would be unable to compete with the other tracks and closed Hialeah Park to the public. The track would sit vacant for the next few years and would even have its racing permit revoked for going multiple years without running any races. In 2009, Brunetti would apply for and be granted a quarter horse license. The historic racetrack reopened on November 28, 2009, but only for quarter horse races. The park installed slot machines in January 2010 as a part of a deal to allow for two other calendar seasons of racing. On August 14, 2013, a brand new casino opened its doors at Hialeah Park. At some point over the next few years, the track that was once known as one of the most beautiful racetracks in the world was able to take advantage of a state law that required them to hold racing. For Hialeah to run its casino, it was required to run its quarter horse racing. However, the law was very vague on what that exactly meant. When Hialeah opened for the season, they would run two race cards a day with roughly eight races on each card and only two horses in each race. The horses would stand in a makeshift starting gate and run 110 yards. They would do this for the minimum number of days required. It quickly became known how ridiculous this was, but it didn't seem to stop them. As of today, the casino is still in business and still simulcast races. The track sits vacant, although there are now plans for a comprehensive development that supports the rich tradition and revitalization of Hialeah Park. The complete restoration of existing amenities and buildings and the development of a new entertainment experience includes a full-service hotel, a movie theater, and the creation of an outlet shopping village. There seems to be no talk currently about bringing back thoroughbred racing or restoring the track itself. <laughs>